Hey guys, what's going on? Andrew coming at you. On my Facebook feed, I've seen a lot of educators and teachers and people in general just discussing opening up schools in the United States. Should they do it? How would it work? Would it be done safely? I really feel like I'm in a unique position because I'm an American, but I taught in Sweden uh, at the height of the pandemic when everything was going down. Uh, since Sweden never had a lockdown and kept schools open except for ninth grade up to like the end of their high school and university, ninth grade and under we had school. So I thought it'd be really interesting to talk about it. I feel like I can offer some value. Maybe there's some things that that worked in Sweden, some things that didn't work, and this can video can be more of like an educational video. Now I will try to keep my personal opinions about COVID-19. Uh, strategy here in Sweden and whether it works or not works. I'm going to try to keep that out of it, this video as much as possible. But if you really want to see that, you can go through and look at previous videos. But it's possible I might be a little biased at certain points, but I will really work hard to not do that. Also, I just want to say that all these opinions are my own, uh, not my school. I think the school that I worked at did a fantastic job, leadership all the way, you know, everybody. I think that everybody stepped up and if you know anyone that's a teacher in Sweden, I think it's really important you let them know how much you appreciate them because this was a very, very uh, difficult year overall. And I never saw complaining. I really just saw a lot of people stepping up because uh, we did it for the kids. Lastly, I'm not an expert, so this is going to be my opinions. And there's some things I can't prove, so I'll just talk about what I think, and then you can take it from there. Now... The first thing I think is important to bring up about teaching during a pandemic or teaching with this COVID-19 thing is mental health. Now, at the time when this was all going down, as, as us as teachers, we didn't really have time to discuss how we were feeling and, and mental health at the time because we had to focus on the kids. But just try to put yourself in my perspective for a second or perspective of other teachers. Um, everything is starting to shut down across all these different countries and you're expecting and thinking that Sweden is going to shut down as well. And you're working in a building of 800 people and then you figure out that you're not going to shut down. And you start to feel very exposed as a teacher because even though I'm not in the risk group, I mean, how, how do I protect myself? How do other teachers protect themselves? It's like the idea of, uh, you know, socially distancing in a school. How, how do you do that? So... At least my stress levels were very, very high every day, and I dealt with a lot of stress. Uh, it was it was very difficult, and I think it's important that it gets talked about because sometimes people don't talk about mental health. So I would say moving forward, uh, we have to focus on the mental health of the teachers and the students because I'm sure it was stressful for them. But I'm just saying that to the United States as well because sometimes mental health isn't talked about so much. And I think it needs to be, and I think teachers will need to have support because it can be a little bit scary. Just you know, 800 people in one place, it's a scary situation. During the peak of this pandemic, at least at my particular school, Sweden decided that school is very, very important for, for kids and that it would be more damaged to keep them home from school. Sweden also said that they believe that young people can't spread the virus. Now, first, my school, we tried to keep the school open as long as possible, but we had to shut down for some parts. Uh, when the peak was really starting to take off, we had high numbers of staff absent. We had high numbers of students absent. And we reached a point where it wasn't possible to have every student in the school. So we did shift to online classes for about two months. And then and after that period, once a lot of teachers had gotten ill or recovered, and maybe the same with the students, people came back to school and we tried to do the best we could to make everything work. Let me talk about how we socially distance at school to the best of our ability. First of all, how do you socially distance? Some things are just not possible and that's at no fault to any school or anything, but here's some of the strategies that we took. First, in Sweden, a lot of people have one class of like 30 kids and they follow that around the school and I think that helps socially distance a lot where like when I was in the United States, a lot of times in high school and things, you had a class and then you're just moving to other classes, but sometimes there were different people in all those classes. There was a lot more mixing. I don't think it's possible really to socially distance in a classroom. So yeah, there, that's, there's always gonna be some risk there because like, how do you do it? But we tried to open windows as much as possible. Uh, we tried to encourage the kids and make sure that they were washing their hands. One thing we did in the cafeteria to help socially distance is, and we did it with staff and students, we had a rule that you had to sit like one chair apart 
And we tried to spread things out. We also changed the, the lunch schedule around so that we didn't have so many people in there at the same time so that we could encourage the kids to socially distance. We, we watched them wash their hands before we came in. And we were encouraged to have as many outdoor lessons as possible. And a lot of people took advantage of that. So it was really nice to see uh, that a lot of people were able to be creative and, and find ways to make it work. Difficult for me, me being a music teacher, like how do I teach music? But I was able to get a hold of some hand sanitizer, be able to claim the instruments, be able to have the students uh, use the hand sanitizer um, either before or after the lessons, and I would encourage them to not touch their face. But with all that said, there's still challenges, right? Because you can encourage kids to socially distance as much as you can, but maybe some kids are still going to play and go together, maybe not listen to everything perfectly. But I did see, think that for the most part, it was taken seriously by the kids. Maybe not at first, just being young, you don't know how everything is going on. But as time moved on, I think everybody was able to adjust. Those are just some things that I think the United States could do. Uh, also, I just want to point out, we don't have masks. We, we didn't wear masks here in Sweden and we didn't wear masks in school. So I think that's important for you guys to know because there's all these people talking about masks and stuff. Now, I just want to point out one thing because uh, the, our leader of the coronavirus strategy team here, the his name is Anders Tegnell. And he said one thing, he said that the virus, the coronavirus does not spread, like that young people don't spread the virus. So I just wanna say, in, in my opinion, I don't think that's true. Um, I think it does spread in schools. So, because in my experience, a lot of teachers got sick. Now, the testing wasn't super good at the time. There's no way I can prove it. Like I got sick for two weeks. Uh, people I knew had like, they lost their sense of smell. It seemed to be a decent portion of the staff got sick with, with COVID-19. Now to be fair, uh, that could have been spread amongst the staff, but we really weren't engaging so much together. So I do think it's possible and I do believe that children can spread the virus. Maybe not to a rate where it's crazy, but I really believe that there was a high number of teachers that were infected. You know, I talked to a lot of other colleagues and teachers at other schools and they, they also had very high absences and people ill uh, and sick, and they also thought that it spread quite a lot. So one thing I'd like to see Sweden do is, is do an antibody test of teachers, because I suspect that teachers were affected at a very high rate. I think after uh, medical workers and, and you know firefighters, police, I think that teachers were the next highest infected. So I'd like to see Sweden put their money where their mouth is and do that study, even though it might disprove what they originally thought, I think it is important to talk about. One thing I want to point out as well is, although I think it was spreading quite a lot, in Sweden, like, the way the rule worked is, if you were sick at all, you had to stay home. And then you had to stay home two extra days until you were symptom-free. Uh, that was the rule here. So you could have had a cold, some people, it was stressful because you're like, am I sick, am I not sick, is this allergies? It didn't matter, if you had anything, you had to stay home, and it was the same, it was the same for the students. So the infection rate might have not been as high, I still think it was, but, it might not have been as high, so I think it's important to point that out. When the virus was spreading, like I said, what happened was we reached a point where we had to shut down and shift uh, to online classes. And then after that happened, we brought the kids back in. And we, here's the model that we used. So in Sweden, year nine is a very important year. Think of it like uh, being a senior in high school, although it's not the exact same thing. But what we did was uh, we prioritized the younger kids. So we would have like fourth graders or fifth graders able to come to the school because we had so few staff. We prioritized them, and then we prioritized the year nines, and then we tried to move to online lessons to make that work. And in the beginning, maybe it was a bit messy, but it was an adjustment for everybody, you know? Not everybody is really technically sound in education. But I really want to say that over the course of uh, uh, maybe two or three weeks, it really started to work well once we got the students to work on it and everything else. And it was interesting. So I do think online classes like do work, but... I know that a good portion of teach, uh, students were happy to come back to school. We eventually started to bring the students back to school because we thought it was important for them to get socialized. What we did was we'd have certain days where maybe it'd be like a year seven group or a year eight group. We tried to give everybody enough time to do that. And when we did that, we tried to focus more on the fact that, yes, we needed to teach the kids and we had a lot of things we needed to teach. But when the students came back, we more focused on making sure that the, the students were like socializing so, you know, the playtime, doing things together was really, really important because 
of the mental health expert. So I think that that was really, really nice. Uh, I also think the model seemed, the model did seem to work as far as having some kids in, having some kids out. And at least from a teacher's perspective, you're not going into maybe a building of like 800 people then, maybe it's three or 400, and the school's a little bit more spread out, so you're able to get the students to spread out a little bit more. So that was a model that seemed to work, but by the end of the year, we did move everybody back in. Now, we did certain things we did different. We didn't have graduation in the same way, and there were certain things we could not do, like trips and we did what we could. It was just basically school play, but we had a lot of social distancing. I mean, all the social distancing that we could do. Final thing I think it's important to point out is when you're a teacher, it's like you can make sure the kids are safe when they're in school, right? I always say this to, to other teachers and just others. You never know. Like school could be the one safe place for a child. That might be the only place they feel safe. So for some children, I'm sure it was scary or they they didn't like not being at school. I mean, because that at school, you can make sure they get a meal. You can make sure they're safe. You can give them, you know, I guess, you know, advice, attention, care. So that's one of the negatives of when we went to online classes is that there are certain kids that maybe need more support from uh, the, the adults and teachers that might not get it. And they kind of lose that safe space that was that was school. So it is important to point that out as well. Now, at the end of it all, was it worth it? Well, to be fair, one of the negative aspects of it was because there wasn't like a decision made, it was like uh, you were working, well, it was like you were doing online classes, you were doing in, in classes. So I had a chance to do a little bit of both and we were trying to find ways to work and that's just what's going to happen when you're at school and you're doing this for the first time. But I think whatever schools decide in the United States and in other countries, I think it's important that you guys just make that decision and stick to it to the best of your ability. So if you're going to do online classes, do online classes. If you're going to bring the kids in, keep them in if you can. But uh, I think a model that could really work is what we did of having certain students in the school, certain students home. You could prioritize seniors in high school and maybe some of the small children in school. And what you could even do is you could have, I think what would really work is you could have students that uh, maybe they were in school for a semester, like till Christmas, and then they do online classes and another group comes. Because one problem can be as a teacher is if you're teaching kids in the classroom, but then you're also doing online lessons, it ends up being a lot of work. And in my opinion, you, you can't do a great quality of both. It's like you can either do really good online lessons or you can really do in really good in-class lessons uh, because then it just begins to be a lot of things going on in your head as a teacher and it can be a bit stressful. Now, another thing I think that, that the United States should do if they do open up schools is I think that they should have masks. Now, uh, there wasn't masks in Sweden, and like I said, I got the feeling that it kind of spread around. So uh, I think it would be really good and important uh, to try the masks out. Now, will kids wear masks? Will they take them off? I can't answer those questions. I really don't know. Um, but I do think it's worth a shot, but then there's sometimes I think about it. If I'm a teacher and I'm talking to a student and I have a mask on, how am I really giving them, even though they're socializing, how, am I, how are they getting my emotions or getting kind of that personal stuff? But maybe it's just one of those situations where if you're going to have all 1,200 kids in a school, if it's like a high school, they got to mask up because you can at least stop the spread a little bit. Now let me go into what I think the United States should do overall. Um, I think that the United States should do something similar to what Sweden did as far as states need to give schools the powers to decide. So I don't think like the whole state should just shut down the schools at this point. I think every school should be willing to try or should be allowed to try their own strategy. But I really think it needs to come down to a case-by-case -case basis. So for example, if COVID-19 isn't spreading much in your, your town or area, you might be able to open up your school. And then you have to see those numbers. And again, if it gets way worse, then you might have to shut down again. Now, what I like is the model of having some students in the school and having some of the students online, as long as it's planned for like the whole term, right? So not just doing it throughout the year, but like if, if, if it's a straight up term that somebody has, like you're doing it till Christmas, I think that uh, that could really, really work. Lastly, I'll just say this. It's okay if you're a little bit scared of COVID-19. I think that the truth is somewhere in the middle. Like I think some people are so afraid of it that it's 
not irrational, but it's unhealthy. And I think there's some people in the United States that don't take it seriously at all. And, you know, that's kind of the, like, I would love to travel to the U.S. right now and see my family. But I feel like because people aren't taking it seriously, for example, it's spreading and it's annoying to me because I'd like to fly home. So, you know, let's try to do what we can. But I won't hate on anybody for not wearing a mask in the United States because we don't have masks in Sweden. So I just don't think that's fair to say. You know, I got sick, for example, and I was fortunate, but I only have one. I never got tested, so I can't say for 100 percent, but I'm yeah, I had it pretty much. So uh, in my experience, uh, my breathing was scary for about one day. I, I thought maybe I might have to go and see someone at least get an inhaler because I was having issues breathing. But then I did recover. Some people connected that I know, and again, personal reasons, I don't go into it, they weren't so lucky. I think it's important to point that out. Some teachers working in school might be at the health risk, and I think that those teachers should not be forced to come into school. I think they should get a chance to teach from on, uh, at home. I think teachers over the age of 60 need to be protected. So it is possible to do if you can protect your kids. No matter what strategy gets picked, there's always going to be a negative. If you have online classes, the kids are going to miss socialization and you're not going to make sure every kid's safe in the school. If you have the kids in the school, there is going to be spread. Even if you take all the stretch, test steps you can, you're still going to have spread, which means it's going to spread from home. So it's a stressful time, everybody. There is no perfect answer. All we can do is learn. I hope that you were able to take away something positive here from this video that maybe you can apply. I hope you didn't feel that I was super biased in giving my opinion. I hope you felt that I was neutral here. And, you know, if you like this video or if you're a teacher in the U.S., I, I suggest sharing it uh, because uh, I really think that there's some value here I can offer to others. So with all that said, everybody, take care of your own mental health. Talk to others if you're not feeling well. I think it's really important right now because we got a lot of angry people in the U.S. right now. Talk to, talk to one another and it's okay to be stressed. You know, if you have any questions you want to ask or anything else, you can put those in the comments below. I really appreciate everybody watching this video all the way through and I will see you in the next video. Take care, Hadel.